Good afternoon, everyone. Whenever you have a speaker speaking on the topic metaverse, an interplay between the physical and the digital worlds, does it work? It invokes a lot of doubts in the members in the audience. Some of the members may wonder whether the speaker is himself or herself who is speaking, or is it his or her digital avatar who is speaking. Let's get this straight. Let me clarify. This is real me. If you're still not convinced, one of you can step up to the stage, come forward and pinch me and you will come to know. Of course, I'm not going to step outside the boundary of this red dot, the customary TEDx red dot. And also given the recent fascination about Gen AI, another doubt may crop up in the minds of the audience, whether the speech or the talk has been written by the speaker himself or herself, or it has been written by a Gen AI tool. Let me sort that out as well. I would like to assure that this particular speech or talk has been written by me and there hasn't been any use of any Gen AI tool, whatever the Gen AI tool is. The aspect of the digital avatar of a person participating in a TEDx talk and speaking so fluently does not work. It does not work yet. But let me tell you what works in the wonderful world of metaverse, which is an interplay between the physical and the digital world, which is going to blur the difference between the physical world and the digital world. For that, we have to go down the path of when Metaverse came into existence. Metaverse as a term came into existence because of a person called Neil Stephenson who coined the word Metaverse, which appeared in his novel called as Snow Crash. Snow Crash used the term to define a fictitious virtual world where people interact with each other in a digital world. Then metaverse started becoming mainstream when there were more environments that started appearing on the horizon. There were environments like the palace, environment like the second life, many of us may be familiar with the term second life, appeared on the horizon and took metaverse to the mainstream. But the nature of this metaverse changed dramatically when the game called Pokemon Go with AR came into existence. It brought in a concept called augmented reality or rather utilized the concept of augmented reality where people were able to overlay computer generated images, computer generated visuals, computer generated content, computer generated music in the physical world. Augmented reality exactly deals with that particular concept. Then companies like Facebook rebranded themselves as Meta, primarily to show that the concept is mainstream. And they rolled out devices called Oculus, which, gets, which goes under the classification of a virtual reality headset. A virtual reality headset allows a user to strap the headset around their face and jump into a digital environment while they are in the physical environment. So the two concepts, augmented reality and virtual reality are going to push the frontiers of metaverse. Then Apple came into the horizon and it announced its entry into an exciting world of metaverse by rolling out what we call as the Vision Pro headsets. And we have seen from the history what Apple has done to the world of smartphones when they launched the family of iPhones. The entire smartphone industry got revolutionized. The same is expected with regards to metaverse. And also in the background, when metaverse is becoming mainstream, there's an important thing that is emerging. Metaverse initially came into existence from an entertainment perspective, from a gaming perspective, or for social interactions. The concept of commerce appeared through metaverse through 
a concept called social commerce but that social commerce is going to become mainstream and going to become a full fledged commerce to understand this we have to also understand about another technology which is fueling that particular metamorphosis and that technology is the telecommunications technology which you use day in and day out so when first telecom appeared in the world it appeared through a generation of telephony called the first generation of telephony g which introduced us to the concept of a landline which was the first immersive experience a customer had access to a customer would call a business probably from 10 am to 8 pm any time during that particular time period and enquire about a product or a service that was the best form of immersivity that was available sounds very trivial isn't it then came the second generation of technology which fueled the concept of web commerce where lot of information was available 24 by 7 on the internet while it enhanced the level of immersivity it was still not very optimal then the audio visual content appeared because of 3g then mobile commerce came into existence because of 4g and as you can see on this particular slide while the immersivity has improved as the generation of technology changed from g to 4g it is still sub optimal and that is where it is going to change not only the commerce but also our daily lives let me explain with few empirical examples let's take the example of real estate all of us have the experience of buying a new home it's such a life defining moment and for such life defining decision we use a very irrational process what is the irrational process that we use we go to a project site where the home is not been constructed we admire the project site and then we bring our family members also to look at it then we are shown a sample apartment which is no way closer to the home that we are going to buy or live in or we are taken into an auditorium like this where audio visuals of the proposed project are shown with high pulsating imagery and high pulsating sound we get impressed and make a purchase decision we also pay 10 to 15% premium for a corner apartment or an apartment on a high floor or an apartment facing the park but still we do not get to see the actual views so now you can understand what an irrational procedure we use for a rational decision it's time to change and that's exactly what the team at mahindra life spaces did they harness the power of metaverse introduced an environment called as reality verse where they were able to teleport the customers into their future homes and customer was able to visit their future home explore the entire home go into the balcony check out the views invite their family members on a 24 by 7 basis regardless of where they are based they could be anywhere on this earth and they along with that particular customer through a collaborative fashion were able to teleport themselves into an environment explore their future home fully and then only make a decision of purchasing that particular home this not only revolutionized the entire real estate industry but it has also brought two important concepts to the fore or practices to the fore number 1 it uh, it eliminated the need to build demo homes which are made with plaster of paris once the project is completed these homes generally get demolished they are not biodegradable hence they end up polluting the mother earth the second the research suggests that on an average a person tends to make 8 to 10 trips before finalizing his or her decision on buying a home and assuming this person have not used an electric vehicle they end up burning fossil fuel to get to that project site which is again not very good from an environment perspective so this is how it has changed the real estate industry or is going to change the real estate industry and also contribute to the sustainable goals in the real estate industry still not convinced okay
let me take you to another example from our daily lives and that is from the auto industry. Research suggests that in a family with preteen kids, generally it is the kids who make the purchase decision because they presumably know much better than their parents. And we have heard this, the kids telling their parents, you don't know about this, you don't know about that. And once they have done the shopping, they, it's the time to go to the showroom. When they get to the showroom, the active role that these kids were playing, they go back into a passive role. Why? Because they are not allowed to drive the vehicles. Legislation does not permit them to drive the vehicles because they are under age. So this is where the experience needs to be changed. And that's what exactly the team at Mahindra and Mahindra Auto did where they created the vehicle simulator and this vehicle simulator was placed in the showroom when the kids parents drove the real vehicle in the real world these kids ended up getting the same experience in a simulator vehicle using either augmented reality or virtual reality the passive role has been converted back into an active role and they became equal participants in that purchase making process. These are two examples that we have from our daily lives. Let me take you to another example if you are still not convinced about the defining role that Metaverse is going to play in our daily lives. This time, this particular experience is from the exciting world of space exploration. We all knew about Chandrayaan 2 where it was not a successful mission and it actually broke the dreams of many people and it also made many Indians sad. It also made me sad because my tax money was involved over there. But thankfully Chandrayaan 3 did much better compared to Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 3 was a roaringly successful mission. And why did Chandrayaan 3 succeed when Chandrayaan 2 did not succeed? The answer to that lies in what I call as a virtual lunar world. It may sound a little bit ironical that to be successful in a physical lunar world, you had to create a virtual lunar world. And that's exactly what ISRO did. They created the virtual lunar world programmed all the components of a lunar world like the gravitational force, how would dust interact with the landing gear of Vikram when it approaches the moon. They had programmed a million parameters, they simulated the entire experience and finally they produced an astounding successful feat where India became the first nation in the entire world to put Vikram or land Vikram, a man-made vehicle on the south pole of the moon. When that happened, my chest did swell by few inches and I also bragged about it to my friends, international friends and international clients just to rub it in. All these examples are going to allude or rather alluding to a silent trend that is emerging. Let me demystify that to you. Number one, to be successful in the current world, build first in the virtual world. You build the virtual world, program the real world physics into the virtual world and then you take it out to the real world. And these examples are very, very important because from the evolution of the mobile technology, we have seen every time the nature of technology changed, the form and the nature of commerce has changed. The m-commerce or the app-commerce that you are used to now is going to change into meta-commerce as I mentioned before. Leave aside the world of commerce, let's talk about few more meaningful things that could be accomplished through this immersive technology. Number one, the kids in the rural areas now have an opportunity to go to the school without leaving their village. The team at Tech Mahindra has demonstrated this by creating a school in Roblox where people in a rural area were able to go to the school in Roblox and learn the language of English. Number two, the surgeons 
no more need to dread the prospect of performing neonatal surgeries. Neonatal surgeries on infants which have complicated medical conditions. Now, these surgeons can perform those operations in the virtual world and perfect it as many times as they want, perform the surgery as many times as they want and perfect it. And only when they are convinced, they will now be able to operate or do or perform a real life operation on that particular infant with an intention of making it successful. So these are the trends that we are seeing in the world today when it comes to metaverse which has a beautiful interplay between the digital world and the physical world and it is also going to blur the lines or the differences between these both worlds. And remember, I told you in the beginning of this speech or at the beginning of this particular speech wherein I said that a digital avatar coming and stepping onto a stage like this speaking fluently does not work. I said it does not work and the phrase it does not work has been playing an important role in the world of technology. Every time somebody said it does not work has led to the triumph of this particular technology and we have seen that with the evolution of the mobile technology from G to 4G. When phone commerce came into existence, people wanted web commerce. People said it does not work. Web commerce came into existence. When web commerce came into existence, people wanted some other different form of a, a commerce, which is mobile commerce. And people said it does not work. Now we are at the cusp of 5G evolution and it's time to change the mobile commerce into a new commerce and that is where the meta commerce is going to play. The fact that somebody said it does not work, the technology has triumphed and the very fact that I said in the beginning of this particular speech that it does not work, a digital avatar coming onto the stage does not work actually will make it work. Thank you very much.